There's a bunch of things on the agenda that um, this board was not privy to, and uh, therefore should be either postponed, including many of the motions, one of which is uh, the Portnoff Law Association, which had no attachments to it, the addendum that just showed up prior to walking in the door. And in addition to um, these court cases that we withdrew, and Mr. Schwab gratefully bought his filings, I hope. Mine's about the same size. I'm surprised. Should have brought mine. Also, I noticed that there's no tax increase, um, but the district uh, has projections of a negative budget. And using fund balance collected from overtaxation, to compensate the shortfalls from the overspending habits. I don't know who put on personnel agenda number A for a list of candidates when none of the board has seen any of the resumes or was privy to any of the information. Same with the recommendations to hire people. There was no committee, no resumes, and no question as to the relations and or abstentions that may occur for those personnel. I want to thank all the uh, employees that are retiring after 25 years, 24 years, 23 years, and 12 years of service. Thank you. It is fantastic to, uh, to see that you stayed this long and did a great job. Thank you. Um, and then the last one I had, sorry, give me a second. The board is considering a climate study, which I looked under the school code and could not find anywhere. So I don't know what authorizes us to be able to do things that are not within the school code. And then also number C, I'm not sure who put this on the uh, agenda, to propose that the board agree to get the same clearances that all other school volunteers have to acquire. I'm not sure who uh, put that on the agenda. I like that it's on there. But I don't know who put it on. Uh, contrary to social media, it was not me. Uh, but thank you for the credit. And then I also want to look at letter L. If you look at the school code section 608 and 610, the King's prior resolution should be identified as to what part of school code was that those monies allocated. And if they were misallocated, because they are not with the school code, the district should force those that voted for it to repay it to the district. Thank you. Next up, Mr. Hauser. Concerns items E and F. If I read this correctly, these would reduce graduation credit requirements for students. Um, I just wanted to go on the record uh, as a uh, former teacher in the district, the current administrator, a parent, and taxpayer. I think this is a very uh, bad idea. I would urge the board to vote against reducing that. We presently have a very competitive district. Uh, lots of opportunities for students involved core subject areas, taking advanced courses, uh, the advanced placement level, honors level, college preparatory level. Uh, we also have that same type of waiting in many of our electives. Um, I've seen social media postings that reducing the credit requirements could potentially save the district tens of millions of dollars. Um, one of my immediate questions is how, uh, which teachers and employees would be fired to uh, come up with that if we do a reduction in the credits. 
I would also question uh, which programs would need to be cut. If we go to the state minimum of 21 credits, there's very specific requirements we have to jump through the four English credits, three in science, three in math, three in social studies, and a few other uh, odds and ends here and there. We'll be cutting art, music, band, uh, you know, choir. What else will we be cutting you know, in order to, to uh, meet that? Uh, where will the students not have an opportunity to advance? I, think, I don't know why this is on here, but if we go to 21 credits, it's going to be very difficult for a student to say, let's you know, get the calculus if we're a college-bound student. Let's get to an advanced place in a language course. Let's get to uh, a more rigorous science course. Those opportunities uh, simply go away. Um, I've seen things that other schools have something similar, referencing one or two sentences uh, out of handbooks or, or out of publications. I would question to how many students do those things actually apply. None of that context. Uh, is there. So in my opinion, we keep the credits uh, where they're at. Contrary to what was also put out there, the policy revisions to the graduation requirements, there was no increase in credits. We've been at 28 credits for the better part of a decade, if not longer. Uh, so it's maintaining status quo, just realigning what some of the requirements are. That was what was uh, said at the policy meeting. Um, next thing I'd like to talk about very briefly, item I. Uh, and the director's concerns releasing the emails. My question is, are these the same emails that Judge Nanovic said that there's no, you know, it was shown not you know, to have to release these, and now it's on here again. So why do we continue to uh, discuss that? So that's all I have for your consideration. Thank you for your time. Okay. Next up, Mr. Nick Fuller. Oh, excuse me, Mr. Sir. Thank you. Um, would you like to answer, Mr. Hauser? No. Why not? I mean, he's a, he's a stakeholder. He has concerns. We'll discuss, we can discuss those items when it comes up to the agenda. Okay. I just want to make sure that that opportunity will exist. Are you saying it will? Between us, we'll discuss that item when it comes to the agenda. Thank you. I'd like to just address the agenda item regarding the scale of the sale of the previous elementary schools. Um, first, I just want to say, please, the first two schools were sold happened so quickly. I've seen in this area, other areas, schools that have sat, you know, sometimes also been sold for a dollar, problems pile up. Um, schools are being an asset to liability. Um, so I'm just, I'm pleased, first of all, how quickly the first two schools were sold. Um, in regards to Franklin, I see that back on the agenda again tonight. Shul David, I just want to the board to keep the ball rolling, and I'd like to see those get just off the school's books so they can see a focus on education instead. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Ron Schnell. I'd like to note Mr. Schnell is not a resident of our district. Is he a resident of the state? Excuse me? Is, is he a resident of the state? Yeah. Okay, good. Then he's a taxpayer. He can speak. Oh, I just wanted to make sure. Thank you for your presentation. Yeah, appreciate it. Mr. Schmelt. Thank you, Mr. President, for allowing me time to speak. As a taxpayer in the state of Pennsylvania, there are many things in the Oye Heightened School District that concern me. Due to the limited time available for me to speak, I will concentrate on one very disturbing motion. That motion is Motion K under Director Concerns. I surmise that this motion was brought forward due to a right to know request from a citizen for the pre-bid documents for the Mahoney and East Penn Elementary Schools. That right to know request was fulfilled by saying the district was searched, but the records couldn't be found. Those records are required by law to be kept on file for four years by the Lehighton Area School District. There was also the records of the appraisal that nobody seems to have. When a school board approves to have district property, taxpayers' property, assessed, the people have the right to see those documents. For a director to have to put forth a motion to create a task force to uncover missing do documents is inexcusable. This shows a gross dereliction of duty by the business manager, the superintendent, and the solicitor and not ensuring these documents were retained. As a taxpayer in Pennsylvania that values where my money is spent, I feel at the very least 
These employees of the district should be reprimanded by the board for their lack of oversight. Thank you. Oh, and by the way, Mr. Cleaver, my superintendent does not say where I can and can't go. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Sumjavich? Excuse me, Mr. Turner, can we have the floor just for a second, please? Sure, yeah. okay. Mr. Um, can you pronounce your name again? Zamovich? Yes. All right. He just walked away. Wow. Wally Z. I'll go with Wally Z. We're good friends, Dave. You should I'm going to use, if, it, if it's not disrespectful, I'll use Wally Z. So, Wally Z, walking away from this podium, just mentioned that you want to file a right to know to get the information that is currently sitting in the packet of Mr. Stern. There's no reason to incur the cost of the right to know request, the cost of the solicitor, or the cost of our right to know officer, or according to the testimony in the right to know case, the cost of a lot of the administration for information that is readily available to you because it's a pertinent document as part of this agenda. So it's required to give it to you without the right to know request. If you'd like a copy of it, we can do it. It was tens of thousands of dollars. Thank you. And I think you might be mistaken that the tens of thousands of dollars were billed associated with just to that document, Mr. Krause. So, Mr. Krause? Well, one more time. Mr. Pike provided you with that information. Thank you. Thank you. My comments are in regards to the courtesy of the board director concerns motions A through M. Uh, the motions under the director concerns are always uh, nebulous, sometimes due to pro poor grammar, misspelled words, and lack of associated costs to the district taxpayers. On top of that, most are items that deal with policies, procedures, and our strategic plan that are either already in place or should be sent to committee first for discussion and clarification with a more meaningful motion before bringing to the floor to a vote. In regards to item H, if emails were blocked because they were abusive, it is not a violation of First Amendment rights, which court rulings will support. Language that is considered slander, libel, harassment, or defamation is not protected by freedom of speech. 
When are we going to get down the business of governing this district with a focus on student achievement rather than what somebody said in an email, rehashing history and constantly playing the blame game to support a fake narrative of transparency and corruption? You were elected to act on behalf of your electorate, not to abdicate your responsibility by turning everything over to a discussion point on social media platform. It's been 14 months now of politicking. It's time to focus on moving the district forward before we fall further behind academically with all the ESSA initiative. It's time to stop wasting more of our taxpayer dollars chasing a fox down a rabbit hole. It's time to stop the tremendous waste of our district resources administration and public's time at these meetings. Thank you. Next up will be Joanne Johnson. I'm here to talk about any motion that's pushing because of transparency. Transparency means transparent means having thoughts, feelings, or motives that are easily perceived. Back in 2006, I graduated from the Hyatt Area High School. After working four jobs to earn my degree, I was blessed with the opportunity to return to my hometown, work alongside educators who I spent years looking up to. Many of them are probably here tonight. It was an honor to be offered a job at the Hyatt Area School District. It wasn't a job I took lightly because I knew the high standard and good reputation the district had. I was blown away to be part of this incredible team. I've been here since 2012, and I love getting to know the kids, their families, and the community. It drives my husband a little nuts. To, um, going shopping takes three times as long, because we always run into someone we know because of these connections brought on for working with the district. All of this and more has been fueled by the passion, which recently has been publicly mocked, that I have for teaching kids and wanting to make a difference. If you were to have a conversation with any faculty or staff in this district, I'm sure you'd hear a similar story. Story working hard to make a difference. Tonight I come forward not only as an educator, but um, a taxpayer, future parent, with two little Indians of my own. Since this whole transparency movement, I've been disgusted to find that it's been used to provoke fear, hostility, and division in our community. I've watched as a fraction of the truth has been used to create chaos. We've all watched this over and over for the last couple of years in the name of transparency. I've watched good, not only good, but great people have um, been questioned and have to defend themselves. Um, for following school policy. I then watched these policies be manipulated, not by only uh, board members, but community members who support them for the sake of what? Transparency. This transparency that's being sought after like the Holy Grail, where has it gotten us? Up to our ears and right to nose, for repeated information, staff and faculty email, emails to endanger not only our employees, but our kids, um, as we're desperately villainizing the faculty and staff throughout the district. Shouldn't transparency be in search of full and complete information that's being used to bring this community together to find solutions that are to maintain a high achieving academic environment for all learners rather than distort the definition of what that means? Sadly, I'm sure my words tonight will be distorted and misused like other things in the name of transparency. I'm sure sections will be taken out of context or legalistically combed through. There needs to be accountability, communication, and public involvement in our school district, absolutely. But this current method is not an appropriate way to achieve it. Whoever tries to claim that this transparency movement is for the sake of bettering the community, I challenge you to prove it. Shouldn't we be building a community that people want to be a part of in a district good educators want to work for them to deter them with this uh, hostility? There was a time you could go anywhere in the town and feel the community bond by just simply being a Lehigh Indian. This school and its programs used to bring something to um, bring us all together, where we could all have different opinions about how to make it better, but discuss it respectfully, instead of degrading publicly and um, and instead of degrading people publicly, we could advocate for our children in respectful ways. Instead of looking for solutions, many are focused on collecting problems to prove corruption and continue the division. I look forward to getting back to a place where we can be proud to call ourselves Lehigh Indians. Thank you. 